the boy's uncle entered the longhouse and shook his head as he saw evidence that the boy had used this place as a playhouse. The uncle put on the hat with the wide brim. It fit nicely and would make it much easier to see on a bright spring day. The uncle smiled to himself and returned to the others. Hey everybody, how do you like my new hat? Want me to make you wear? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more of your grandmother. She was wonderful. She had a soft, confident voice, and you always knew to listen when she spoke. I've never known her words to be false. She never gossiped about others, and always found the best in someone. She said that you could always see who someone truly was, not by their words, but by their actions. It was simple, but not easy to do. We never intended to own our parts of the earth. That is a foreign concept to us. We work together in the spirit of God do gi. Everyone worked together to provide what we needed. There was no need for owning land and competition. Owning land and competition changes us. We become selfish, and someone must lose. This is not how the Creator made us, and we were destined to struggle in this system. Grandmother talked of our time in the East, and how we came to the Indian Territory, to the west of the Big Water. More Yonegs came to our lands and settled here. They provided trading with other Yonegs across the undrinkable water, and our deerskins were legendary. As the Yonegs produced more goods to sell and trade, they moved closer to us and where we lived. They needed our land to the east. It became valuable. We used our lives to produce goods and hunt and fish and gather only what we needed, not on additional surplus to be sold for money and things that we wanted but couldn't produce. It finally got to the point where the Yonegs spoke of a place to the west where there would be more deer, fish, and trees than where we lived to the east. They promised us that no one would bother us again. It would be ours and we could use it however we wanted to use it. Some of us agreed, and we left our lands for the new place. Others of us refused, and we were gathered into stockades. We became sick in such a small place, and many of us died there. Some of us fled to the mountains and hid. They never found them, and their ancestors still live in parts of the land to the east. But it is nothing like it originally was. They forced the rest of us to move. Soldiers escorted us to the new place. A fourth of us died before we reached the new lands. Something was wrong, but what could we do? Our journey to the new lands became known as the Trail of Tears. It was a terrible time in our history, but the worst was yet to come. We made it to the new lands. It was tough, but we made it. We are masters at the process to survive, adapt, prosper, and excel. We have shown repeatedly that we can overcome adversity and tragedy and come back better than we were. We set about establishing ourselves, and once we had, the first buildings we built were the Supreme Court building and the male and female seminary buildings. The law and education are still important to us, even to this day. We had our own home. We were literate in our language, and the white children even attended our schools. We allowed them to stay, as long as they didn't slow us down. 
One of the young neg leaders came down to see us. His name was Senator Dawes. He told his people that we were doing fine, but we had come as far as we could because we own our land in common. He said that each of us needed to own our own land so that we would strive to be better than our neighbor, that the competition and free enterprise would force us to be much better than we were. So they cut up our land and gave every family an equal share. They called this an allotment. Many of us sold our allotments and soon had no way to support ourselves. We didn't know how to use and make money for things. When we needed something, we simply hunted, fished, gathered, farmed, or asked someone else for it. Using paper with faces on it to get what we wanted didn't make sense. And before long, most of us had lost our original lands. This was a dark day for us, and it changed our lives forever. But it was time to survive, adapt, prosper, and excel. We are still doing it to this day. Some of us have adapted. A few of us have prospered and excelled. Others have not. And we still struggle, even to this day. It's not a great mystery how we got to America. Now is it? The Yonegs, or the white man as we call them, greatly changed our lives. Some for the better, and some for the worse. Hunted us down like cattle to work from. Gathered us up in our home in Africa, chained us in a boat, and sailed us across the undrinkable water. When we got here, they sold us to folks in the south, and we worked their fields and plantations for them. Oh, yes, master. I'll do anything for you. to be domesticated for their cause. Even selectively bred some of us for a while, and now I wonder why many of us are so big, strong, and fast. It's simple genetics. They don't want to talk about it, and now they use needles to try to keep up. <laughs> you have to go to the love 